There are two ways to retire early. You can receive a windfall or you can get there slowly. Slowly, but still way faster than most people. No matter where you're starting from, I think you can retire sooner than you think. It's just a simple math problem. Life, on the other hand, is not so simple. And that's what makes achieving financial independence and retiring early a little tricky in practice. That and health insurance, am I right? But retiring early is a great goal to have. It means achieving financial independence at a relatively young age, allowing you to have the freedom to retire and pursue your passions without being reliant on traditional employment. By achieving financial independence, you can have more control over your time and make choices based on your personal values and goals. You could even continue working if you're so inclined. I mean, if you're working because you want to, not because you have to, then I would still consider that retiring early. To get to this point though, you need to have enough saved and invested. You need enough so that those investments provide enough to cover your living expenses without the need for a regular paycheck. But how do you know how much you need? That's a key question because most people have no idea how much they need, or they assume they need way more than they really do. And this is why the idea of early retirement doesn't even occur to most people as a possibility. But there's a simple and common rule of thumb that you can go by to figure out how much you need to be financially independent, and it's called the 4% rule. The 4% rule is a widely used guideline in retirement planning. It says that you can withdraw 4% of your retirement savings annually adjusted for inflation each year. This 4% number ensures a sustainable income throughout a very long retirement period. In other words, you could spend 4% of your nest egg each year and not run out of money in retirement. The 4% rule is based on historical market performance. So it's likely to continue to work in the future, but there's no guarantee. That's why it's best to think of the 4% rule as a rule of thumb rather than an absolute law of the universe. But with the 4% rule of thumb in mind, it's easy to determine how much you need to save for financial independence. All you need to do is take your annual expenses and multiply them by 25. This is how much you will need to save and invest in order to retire early according to the 4% rule. This works because if you multiply 4% of something by 25, you'll get to 100%. For example, 4% of $1 million is $40,000. $40,000 times 25 is $1 million. So if you're gonna spend $40,000 per year in retirement, you will need $1 million to retire early. If you spend $80,000 per year in retirement, you will need $2 million to retire early. And retirement planning can get way more complicated than this, but the 4% rule is a great shortcut to get you in the ballpark of how much you'll need saved and invested to reach financial independence. But how exactly do you get there? How do you gather enough savings and investments to have 25 times your annual expenses and turn financial independence from a dream into a reality? Well, you can see in these examples that your expenses are what determine how much you need to save. So to retire early, quite simply, you need to do what most others will not do. You need to reduce your expenses, save most of your income, and maintain a really high savings rate. And I'm sorry if that's not the answer you were looking for, but it's the truth. Many people say they want to retire early and achieve financial freedom, but few people will actually do it because if you actually want to achieve something that most people won't achieve, you have to do what most people won't do. Frankly, if you want to achieve financial freedom in a short amount of time, you have to get comfortable being a super saving weirdo within a very spendy society. This is called being frugal, and it's not as bad as it sounds. In fact, with the right mindset, a frugal way of living can be a more fulfilling, happy, and satisfying way to live. The key to successful frugality is to cut out every expense that does not add to the true fulfillment and satisfaction of your life. This still leaves room for those things that you value and truly do bring you fulfillment, but the rest goes directly to savings which increases your savings rate. So let's talk about the impact of a high savings rate. Your savings rate is the percentage of your income that you don't spend. Not only do you not spend it, but hopefully you invest it. And your savings rate has a massive impact on your ability to retire early. Remember that your expenses determine how much you need to save. By saving more of your income, you're able to accumulate wealth at a faster rate and build a substantial nest egg for the future. 
It's crucial to understand that the higher your savings rate, the faster you can retire. But what's considered a high savings rate? The standard recommendation out there for Americans is to save like 15% of your income, maybe even 20% on the slightly more aggressive side. But the standard savings rate will get you to retirement at the standard time. If you start your career at 22 and save 15% of your income all along, you'll be able to retire in 42.8 years. That's right on time, just shy of 65 years old. If you can manage a 20% savings rate, well, you'll cut that career down to 36.7 years and retire at 58.7 years old. That's technically early, but you're basically 60 years old. You're nearly eligible for Social Security. That's not the kind of early retirement we're talking about. What if you want to be done by 50? In that case, you'll need a savings rate of 30%. That seems doable, but that's also assuming you start at 22. What if you get serious about retiring early, but you're not a spring chicken anymore? What if you're 40 when you decide that this is something you'd like to pursue? Could you still retire by 50? Yes, you can. Again, it's just a math problem. If you can manage a 66.5% savings rate, you can reach financial independence and early retirement in 10 short years. Notice that with all these examples, I didn't make any assumption about your level of income. I didn't even mention income. That's because it doesn't matter for this math. The math works the same no matter your level of income. Your income does not determine how early you can retire. Your savings rate does. A 66.5% savings rate may seem out of reach, but it doesn't have to be that high to retire early. It's just a matter of how fast you want to get there. Of course, having a high income makes it much easier to have a high savings rate. The benefits of a high savings rate aren't limited to complete financial independence, like you're either financially independent or you're not. With a high savings rate, there are benefits along the way even before reaching financial independence. Of course, there's early retirement. As I've discussed, a high savings rate allows you to retire earlier than the traditional retirement age, giving you more time to enjoy your life and pursue your passions. Then there's financial security. Saving a large percentage of your income provides a safety net in case of unexpected expenses or emergencies. Then there's flexibility. With a substantial savings, you have the freedom to make career changes, start your own business, or take sabbaticals without worrying about financial constraints. You also slow down the hedonic treadmill where you're constantly seeking more and better material possessions, and instead you learn to love living on less, appreciating that you already have enough and finding fulfillment with what you already have. All right, so you crank up your savings rate and start accumulating all this saved money, what do you do with it? Well, you need to invest it. And in my opinion, you want to invest it first and foremost into tax advantaged accounts. This will go a long way to reducing the amount of tax you'll pay now in your earning years, as well as down the road in early retirement. Tax advantaged accounts play a crucial role in early retirement planning by offering significant tax benefits and helping individuals save on income taxes. There are several types of tax advantaged accounts here are a few of the most common ones in the United States. You've got the 401k. This is a retirement account offered by employers that allows individuals to contribute a portion of their pre-tax income, and this reduces their taxable income. Then there's the Roth IRA, similar to a traditional IRA, but contributions are made with after-tax income and withdrawals in retirement are tax-free. They also have higher income limits. For early retirees, Roth IRAs are great because you can withdraw the contributions to the account anytime you need to without additional tax or penalty. And then there's the Health Savings Account or HSA. This is a tax advantaged account that allows individuals with high deductible health plans to save for medical expenses with pre-tax dollars. HSAs are not only a great way to save and spend on medical expenses tax-free, but they're also an amazing investment and early retirement tool as well. Check out this video to learn more about HSAs and investing in an HSA. The benefits of tax advantaged accounts include reduced tax liability. They offer various tax benefits such as tax deductions, tax deferred growth, or tax free withdrawals. Basically, they help individuals save on income taxes. And because you're saving on taxes, you have more to invest, more to compound over time. All right, let's talk about some other investment strategies, including diversifying your portfolio. 
You want to invest in a diversified stock portfolio to spread risk and maximize returns. A popular choice in the financial independence community is a total U.S. stock market fund, such as Vanguard's total U.S. stock market ETF. That ticker symbol is VTI. A fund like this has very low fees, and it's designed to match the performance of the overall U.S. stock market. If you're limited to the options within a 401k fund, you can look for a similar fund or an S&P 500 fund, or if those aren't available, you could choose a low-cost target date fund that has an aggressive ratio of stocks to bonds. And after you've done all this and you retire early, what if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't work out and you have to go back to work? Well, then you go back to work. At least you gave it a try and had a nice sabbatical in the meantime. But the reality is that if you do some reasonable planning, I think that once you get to early retirement, you'll do what it takes to stay there. You'll figure it out. You'll adjust your spending or find new streams of income if necessary, and you'll continue to enjoy your financial freedom. And just remember, the most important answer to how do I retire early is the savings rate. And unless you receive a windfall, a high savings rate is really the only way to achieve an early retirement. A great way to increase your savings rate is to reduce or eliminate your recurring expenses. This increases your level of financial freedom instantly. And you can learn how that works in this video. You can take that money that you're no longer spending on daily lattes and invest it instead. And now you're making that money work for you, growing it over the decades through the power of compounding.